We have broken this game down about as many ways as you possibly can. I've told you all the strengths, all the weaknesses, and went through with experts from different people to break down this specific game and this specific offense and defense. Well, tomorrow we find out. Right now, I'll tell you why Ole Miss will win this game. This is the Locked On Ole Miss podcast. You are locked on Ole Miss. Your daily podcast on the Ole Miss Rebels. Part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. All right, welcome to the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast. I am your host, Stephen Willis. This episode of the Locked On Ole Miss Podcast is brought to you by Sling TV. Don't miss this week's matchup between the Auburn Tigers and the Ole Miss Rebels from Vault Hemingway Stadium at 11 a.m. Central on ESPN. It's right here on Sling. Sling, the TV you love for a price you'll love. Try it today. Also, thank you for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. So do us a favor and subscribe to the YouTube channel. Hit the bell for notifications and new videos going up, which happens quite frequently. And of course, participate in the conversation by commenting or upvoting the video as well. So thank you very much for that. Ole Miss is going to win this game because I think Jackson Dart is going to take a step against an improved Auburn secondary. They're they're better than Vandy was. So this is going to be a step up for Jackson Dart to perform, but I think Jackson Dart will perform. Now, historically, when you look back on it, Jackson Dart probably will throw the ball to the other team at some point. I think Auburn will have a pick somewhere in this game. But I think that just kind of comes with the territory at this point. You can't judge a quarterback competition off of one singular throw unless it's a 13-10 game and that makes it a 17-13 Auburn win. That, That would be a thing. But if Ole Miss is in control and handily doing it, you can see that Jackson Dart is going to play the way he's going to play and he's effective doing it. So I think he is going to take advantage of this Auburn secondary, which is a decent Auburn secondary and the strength of that team. Because I think that Auburn is going to have to sell out so much to stop the run. They gave up um, like 270 against Penn State. They gave up 290 against Georgia. And Ole Miss runs the ball better than both of them do. Now, we'll have to see if Ulysses Bentley the fourth is back this week. If he's back, it could get really interesting in that room because the depth is going to kind of stand up a little bit. But Quinshawn Judkins and Zach Evans, they're going to tote the mail. Now, Ole Miss has made a living on offense running the inside zone play. You see people doing the double A-gap stunts on either side of the center to try and blow up that game, running directly upfield. Um, Vanderbilt did that. Everybody does that when they need to stop because odds are Ole Miss is running inside zone. They don't run a lot of run plays. Now, they run a few different formations and they might make it look different but there's not a whole bunch of plays so in the run game honestly expect them to go outside and make those linebackers start to move um horizontally laterally because if this offense tortures linebackers like i've said for i don't know two years that they torture linebackers you need to start getting them moving linebackers is the weakness of the auburn defense they've struggled up to this point um, Owen Papo um, had like a 32% grade on PFF last week. So pay attention to that. Now, that is going to cause the safety um, to come up. That is going to cause the corners to look back in the backfield because Ole Miss is such a strong running team. When that happens, the Lane Kiffin shot plays can take effect. Um, deep balls to Jonathan Mingo, deep balls to Malik Heath. Jordan Watkins over the middle, who I think will have an increased role with the absence of Michael Trigg. Now, I think that there's a chance in this Auburn game, and it's about time that we see it, I think 20 personnel could make its debut this week. If not this week, they're going to save it for LSU or A&M, but I think sometime in the next three weeks, you're going to see a package of 20 personnel with Zach Evans and Quinshawn Judkins on the field at the same time. The reason we haven't so far is because Michael Trigg is such a special athlete and his potential to make great plays 
was basically what that play was whenever he got hurt against Vanderbilt. He has such a huge catch radius. He's such a mismatch against linebackers over the middle of the field. And Michael Trigg going out, it, it hurts Ole Miss. But it doesn't necessarily hurt Ole Miss as much as you think. Because at this point still, Michael Trigg, great player. I'm not saying he's not a great player. But at this point, it was potential more than um, realism. Um, when it comes to Michael Triggs' perception by the fan base and potentially by the coaching staff. Um, Chad Kelly has the perception of being the better blocker, a little bit lacking in the pass-receiving game. So I think you're going to see a mixture of Casey Kelly run blocking. I think they're going to do some RPO stuff. They're going to send him out in routes. He's not so deficient that that'll happen. But you'll also see... Zach Evans and Quinchon Judkins on the field at the same time, which means you can run basically right or left inside zone without changing the formation, without giving the thing up. So if a defensive line slants, they could slant completely out of the play, and it wouldn't be necessary off, necessarily off of a tendency of Ole Miss football. So I think that's fairly interesting. I'm curious to see what it looks like because – This Ole Miss running back room is talented. This wide receiver room is talented. A little bit thin at tight end at the moment. Offensive line, two sacks given up through six games. That's pretty hard to beat. So these are big moments for Ole Miss offensively. You can't really get around that. And I'm excited for this game because if Jackson Dart takes that next step, let's say he goes, again, 25 for 32. Let's just – Throw those numbers out again. He throws for 300 yards or 275 yards, no picks, two touchdowns. All of a sudden, Ole Miss wins this game pretty handily because that means big plays were there. That means they were trying to really force up to stop the run because as we've seen for many games, if there's two touchdown passes thrown, there's probably also two others run in. And in a Southeastern Conference game, I don't think Auburn has scored 20 points this year. Now, Robbie Ashford's a dangerous player. And we're going to talk about the Auburn offense on third down and specifically what we need to get them to for hyper-success defensively. But offensively, I think it's going to be like it always is. The catalyst is on Jackson Dart. And if he takes a step, if he moves up, this defense gets a little bit better this week. All of a sudden, you can see him starting to progress towards a potentially huge game three weeks down the road. Now, I'm not looking over anybody. I mean, it didn't re- wouldn't really matter if I did. But we're all building towards that. We're, t- we're building to try and get to Atlanta. Now, real quick before I take the first break. The whole thing is like, hey, we're bowl eligible. I, I hate that. I think you should celebrate internally that it's happened, but almost like it's like a baseline milestone. Whenever you celebrate it, it's almost like it's a finished goal and whatever's going on. And I understand that for years, the Independence Bowl was the de facto home of Ole Miss football, Music City Bowl, things like that. But they moved up into a certain level to the point where Six games in, they've won six games. It's not a story that you're bowl eligible at that point. This team was going to be a bowl eligible all along. This team's trying to get to Atlanta. That's the goal. So if you want to put a benchmark out there, it's November 12th. You need to handle business leading up to November 12th because if you don't handle business up until then, that game doesn't mean anything. But... That should be the benchmark game, not bowl eligibility. 10-0 and 0 should be the goal, honestly. And then you go in and you have the Arkansas, you have Mississippi State, and, you know, let's go. But that's just my little thing. I did see a little bit about, hey, we're bowl eligible. And it's like, great, and let's, let's keep going. Um, because six, six wins in six games, bowl eligible was not your problem. So... Anyway, I do want to let you know about Underdog Fantasy. This episode is brought to you by Underdog Fantasy. It's the easiest place to spice up your college football season. So what you do, okay, 
go there, sign up for an account, and you pick two to five players, right, across your team, not and decide whether they'll go higher or lower than the stat total that they put out. So just for an example from last week, they wanted to know if Anthony Richardson from Florida was going to be higher than 200 and a half passing yards against Mizzou. Or Stetson Bennett was going to be lower than 277 and a half passing yards against Auburn. Auburn just doesn't give much much through the air. Um, Georgia is the better team and they'll win the game, but you know, they won the game, but what you know, what what do you think he was going to do? Georgia obviously ran the ball very effectively. Um, but that's the point. So go to underdog and make your picks like I do. It's easy to play and available in over 30 states. Just pick between two or five players, like I said, not just the Ole Miss team, any team, and decide whether they'll fit, finish higher or lower than their projected stats. One of the easiest fantasy games to play out there, and you can win cold hard cash in a single game. Sign up with promo code Locked On. That's one word, Locked On, and Underdog will double your first deposit up to $100. Deposit 100 bucks, get 100 bucks free. It's a pretty good deal. Go to Underdog Fantasy and find the Underdog Fantasy app in the App Store or Google Play Store. That's Underdog Fantasy, promo code Locked On. That's one word, Locked On, L O C K E D O N, and get in on the Fantasy Pick'em today. All right, thank you very much for making the Lockdown on Miss Podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including iTunes and Spotify. Do us a favor. Go leave us a five-star review on iTunes and Spotify. Um, you can say whatever you want to say. Just make sure it's a five-star review. That way, when an Ole Miss fan looks for an Ole Miss podcast and he puts Ole Miss podcast in the Google machine, the Locked On Ole Miss podcast comes up and they can find this show. We'd appreciate that very much. Anyway, in the first segment of the show, we talked a little bit about how Jackson Dart was going to take a step against a stingier Auburn secondary. They, they've played pretty well this year, but they're kind of run defense deficient at the moment. Now, because of that, I think that Ole Miss is going to run the ball to start with and Auburn is going to have to sell out to stop the run and the game plan could go about three different ways in the first quarter. So everybody be patient. This could look a little bit like the Vanderbilt game if Auburn is moving the sticks, if Auburn is um, you know, using the clock, if they get a stop or two, it could be a, a, a hairy, dicey situation early in the game. But I think a breakthrough will come. Now, the other th- reason that I think that Ole Miss will win this game is that Auburn's offense on third downs, it's not very good. Um, if Ole Miss can contain Tank Bigsby to where Auburn is getting into consistently a third and six, third and seven, third down. I think the percentage, and I've said this two or three times during the week, it's probably 10 to 15% less than the average team on third, that third down facility. So the chance for hyper success is there. With Auburn's offensive line problems, they do not want an, um, a passing, obvious passing situation. Robbie Ashford's going to scramble around for some first downs. John Samuel Shanker, Shank, Shanker is probably their best weapon in the past game at the moment. They have some decent wide receivers. Core Moy does some things on the outside, but they can't really work downfield so much at this point because the offensive line has struggled so much. There's a play against Georgia game. I've talked about this once or twice this year. Uh, Georgia rushed three. One player was blocked by four defenders and two were set th- set free. And that, that, that happened on one play. It wasn't Georgia doing anything special. They just got a free run to the quarterback because of deficiencies. I, almost schematically messing up their slides in protection. Now, it could be something where Robbie Ashford is supposed to set up the protection, and that is not his strong suit. So we'll see. If I was Ole Miss... And we talked about this in the keys of the game and the breakdown, the whole nine yards. I would send six every play to start the game. I would make sure that Tank Bigsby and Jarquez Hunter cannot run the ball. Make Robbie Ashford make plays in the passing game. That provides your best chance, your best opportunity to win the game. Now, can Robbie Ashford burn you? From time to time, he's probably not going to consistently do it. So, 
I think he was like 13 for 38 or something like that against Georgia. So if you take away that run game defensively, and I think Chris Partridge is well on the way to understanding what he needs to do in that scenario. But if you take that away, all of a sudden our Auburn becomes one-dimensional, and it's not the dimension that they want to be one-dimensional as. If you if you have to be at one-dimensional, they want to be normal one-dimensional, where they ha- they can only count on running the football, and they can Robbie Ashford can throw the ball as little as possible. But if they are at the point where Robbie Ashford has to win this game, that's a problem. Now remember last week, before last week's game against Vanderbilt, Ole Miss was kind of in the same boat. They didn't know if Jackson Dart was going to be able to win the game playing quarterback throwing the football. Against Vanderbilt, they were able to do it. They hit a couple of shot plays. They drew some stuff up, and it became almost like the offense looked a lot like we remembered it from 2020 and 2021. And if as that improves, I'm telling you, the road to scary offense is just slowly matriculating. Now, we need to be in place here pretty quick because we've reached the part of the schedule where we need to be somewhat of a finished product offensively, but we still have a little bit of time. So don't fret if there's a little bit of an issue here, a little bit of issue there. I know when everybody looks at quarterbacks, they expect perfection. I know Auburn's doing the same thing with Robbie Ashford. Everybody expects perfection. Everybody sees that Jackson Dart was 25 for 32 with two interceptions and three touchdowns, and everybody is focusing on the two interceptions. Now, they were horrible interceptions. They were bad, but they're also correctable. They are absolutely correctable at this point. And when you have a young quarterback, this is going to happen. Remember, Matt Corral, as a, I think a junior, threw six interceptions at Arkansas and five at LSU. It's going to be okay. It's absolutely going to be okay. So if we can keep Auburn's offense to where you have a third and six and longer, like I said, we don't even need extended yardage. But they have had problems with false starts. They have had problems with motion. So if you are in the stadium, go in the game. If you are listening to this on the way up to the stadium, it is imperative that Ole Miss is loud. Now, we know that Vault hemingway Stadium isn't the loudest stadium in the world, and a lot of that is just acoustics of the way it's built. But if the ball is inside the 20-yard line where you are in the student section end zone or you are in the south end zone, it can get pretty rowdy. It can get pretty loud. At the 50-yard line, it's going to be okay. But as it gets down to crunch time, it's going to get loud. People are going to yell the same amount, whether at the 50 or the 20, but it's just the way the stadium is built. It has a little bit to do, I think, with that overhang in the south end zone. It has a little bit to do with the closed-in end zone and the rowdiness of the people in it in the north end zone, the students. So we'll see exactly how that looks. I mean, I am really genuinely excited for this game, honestly. I mean, some people are not, but Ole Miss has a chance to go 7-0. and That has happened one other time in my lifetime. And I don't think they've ever gone 8 up because it'll be a similar situation like 2014 where you go 7-0 and and LSU is sitting right there on the other side. Now, also, we need to keep this in mind. 2014 may have started 7 and up. But that season ended in a disaster. There was the um, loss to LSU, loss to um, Arkansas, and loss to TCU, I believe. Auburn, LSU, Arkansas, TCU. Those those were the losses. And that happened after Ole Miss started 7 and up. So there's a long way to go this season. And a ton of things can happen. So Ole Miss can lose to Auburn. Ole Miss can lose to LSU. And Ole Miss can lose to A&M. Those games are losable. I don't know if they will. I think Ole Miss will be favored in them. But they are losable. There's a chance that they could jump up and get them. You saw Texas A&M was one terrible end of game play away 
from potentially beating Alabama in Tuscaloosa with no quarterback, with Haynes King, who has a release that makes Tim Tebow look like Dan Marino. You see Mississippi State, who has a genuinely good football team this year, just don't show up at the middle of third quarter and fourth quarter, and LSU just kind of wins that game in a walk. And that's the game this year that LSU has really won in a walk. It's been a struggle the rest of the way. But Mississippi State has a good team. So nothing is guaranteed. But I do think Ole Miss is going to win this game. I think that line is fairly close to right. My prediction for the game, I think, was um, 34-17, something like that. 34-17 is what I'm going in that game. I think um, it's a game where Auburn is going to try and stop the run. I think some big plays are going to happen. And once something bad happens to Auburn, we've all seen this game. We all watched 2011. Whenever adversity strikes a team like this, they fold. They give up. Now, I'm sure they're going to play hard for Brian Harson, but what's going to happen when something bad happens? It's like Vanderbilt last week. Everything was fine. They were doing absolutely great until adversity hit right before halftime. Once that happened, they folded. And that's just because they don't know how to win. They expected the comeback to happen. Auburn, at this point, is pretty close to like 9-10 and 10 or something like that in the last 19. They're getting to the point of not knowing how to win a game either. That's the reason they're going to make a change after the season because they don't want that attitude to take hold. But it will be pretty interesting. Anyway, Tom Vanderford is going to come up and talk about Ole Miss sports. We're not going to have Kara this week. We couldn't sync up the schedules. Um, she'll be back next week, and I think we'll have a giveaway for that as well. So Tom Vanderford coming up right after these messages. Thanks for making the Locked On Ole Miss podcast your first listen every day. We are free and available wherever you get your podcast, including YouTube. So do us a favor. Hit the bell for notifications. Subscribe to the YouTube channel. And, of course, participate in the conversation by commenting below and, of course, upvoting the video itself. I am here in this weekly spot with Tom Vanderford. We're going to talk a little bit of Ole Miss sports today like we do every Friday. How are you doing, Tom? Doing great, man. Man, uh, Ole Miss and Auburn. This weekend, Auburn, the Ole Miss, let's just say that they've had Ole Miss's number over the year. Even when Ole Miss has had a better team, a lot of times they ended up losing the game. And my whole thing is, remember, you're playing against the bottom third SEC team here. Play against them and not the logo on the side of the helmet. Because sometimes with them and Alabama, for some reason they've got voodoo over Ole Miss. Yeah, I, I completely agree with that. I, hmm. I and you've probably seen this too, I, and I don't know if it's true. I didn't fact check it, but supposedly the last three times that Ole Miss has beat Auburn in Oxford, the coach has been fired, so Auburn's coach. So I uh, I hope that we send another one packing Saturday, so yeah. tomorrow. So I'm looking forward to the game. I'm looking for – I want to see our defense stop their run game. I think they're pretty much one-dimensional, but they also, just as as Coach Kiffin's mentioned this week, they have got to keep Ashford under control. He's a very good scrambler, mm-hmm. so they've got to make sure that we've got a spy on him. And, of course, you know, we've got the perfect, in my opinion, the perfect defense to have a spy. We, we have, you know, three really good safeties that we could uh, – we could use any of those three at any time. So that's what I'd like to see. I'd like to see us stop their run game, force force Ashford to beat us in the air. And on the flip side, I know Auburn's got a good defense. I want to see us run the ball against Auburn. I think we I think we need to be able to run the ball and and we need to be able to throw the ball too. I I'm very I went back and watched the uh, Vandy game, and the second half, it it appeared to me, I may be wrong, but it appeared to me like a light went on in Jackson Dart's head, and he looked a whole lot like the guy we had last year in the second half against mm-hmm. Vandy. Uh, 
that was really good to see. That was something that I expected would come as the year progressed. And I'd like to see that continue as well. I like how we've had three different receivers now that have hit the 100-yard mark this year in a game. And I would really love for our slot that's not been feeling well, uh, Jalen uh, Robinson, to be the fourth one this Saturday. Yeah, with I think he's a little bit gimpy at the moment with another hamstring issue. Oh but goodness! I th- yeah, I, I think that could I think it could come, but um, Jordan Watkins, who had the hundred one of the hundred yard games against Vanderbilt. Um, I think he is going to continue to improve in that position as he's becoming a go-to to Jackson Dart, which is going to really help that pass game, especially with Michael Trigg not necessarily being out there. Yeah, that's true. That's true. You know, Michael Trigg is intriguing. He's He's got all the tools, but he – and he caught some passes this year, uh, a few, and uh, made some good catches and made some good, some good runs, but – I'm interested to see the true freshman, Kyron Heath. I'm interested to see what he can do. We know what we know what Kelly can do. Kelly's going to be a good blocker. Kelly's going to be a good possession type tight end. But I think Heath may be a field stretching tight end as well, and that always helps in in Lane's system. Yeah, he, he does a good job of finding out how to use those guys, especially with the tight end position. I think the problem is I don't know where Kyron Heath is in run blocking because Michael Trigg was even struggling in run blocking. Yeah, Michael Trigg st- struggled greatly in run blocking, and, yeah. and Heath um, is one of those hybrid tight ends. He's not very bulky, so he's probably going to struggle too. So that's something that we need to we need to look at Saturday as well. If he gets if he gets you know a certain amount of reps, I mean I know Kelly's going to get most of them, or I assume he will. And uh, but we've just got so many weapons. So you know, and and Auburn's got a good defense, but Georgia put thirty eight on them. So you know, and I, I'll be honest with you, I think our offense is 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 good as well. Mm-hmm. So I I'm I'm really looking forward to seeing us try to dominate an SEC opponent mm-hmm. like we did in the second half with Vandy. I'd like to see that the whole game Saturday. That would be what I would like to see. Oh, did you see the fields, the paint job that the fields gotten they're working on right now with like the oh. American flag themed end zones? Yeah, yeah, it's gonna be sharp. Yeah, it's yeah. Veterans Day. Hey, uh happy Veterans Day Saturday for, for you and me both. Hey, is that in October this year? Well, no, they I mean it's just Veterans. It's always in November, but it's Veterans yeah. Day Saturday for for uh, our Veterans Appreciation Day for the game Saturday. Yeah. Yeah, I knew they moved it up and I think that is because normally it's right around where that Alabama game would be. But right. I think they got plans uniform-wise for that Alabama game. And uh, they I, could they're not going to do veterans things. Yeah, I wouldn't doubt it. I think yeah. that they get that out of the way uh, with Auburn. So that's kind of what I'm looking at this weekend. I think that uh, we should be pleasantly surprised with the outcome. Other than that, I just, you know, glad to see that we're recruiting well. Mm-hmm. We've got plenty of, of good visitors coming in Saturday. So it's good to see that consistency finally in year three uh, with no COVID and, and no no reductions and this and that and the other in year three of, of the Lane Kiffin era. Yeah, absolutely. Also, before we do our prediction and everything, I've, I've talked about this for a couple of shows now. So if you guys are listening to this, I apologize if you've heard it before, but Tom might not have. Um, I think we are about sometime in the next 15 days. Um, that's That'll include the next three games. I think Ole Miss is going to come out in 20 personnel. They've been a 10 personnel team or an 11 personnel team um, all the way through, which would be one back and one tight end or 10 personnel of one back and no tight ends. I think 20 personnel and getting Quinshawn Judkins 
and Zach Evans on the field at the same time, if Ulysses Bentley is back, I think that's something we need to keep an eye on moving forward, especially getting ready as a package before Alabama. Yeah, I think that's a great idea. I'm sure Lane's going to have some stuff up his sleeve for Alabama. Hmm. Um, and and to be honest with you, I think we'll uh, I think we'll fare well in Baton Rouge and 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 College Station as well. That's just my opinion, of course. Of course, this is a, a perspectives uh, mm-hmm. podcast. So, but I really think that if this team plays to its ability. Uh, there's a good chance that we could go into that Alabama game 9-0. and Yeah, I think that's the goal. And depending on what happens this weekend, that's the reason I um, when I released things on social media today, I talked about it's like, Ole Miss fans need Tennessee to win this game. And this isn't because they need, they're going to lose to Alabama. I'm saying if they beat Alabama, this will be a two-game swing for them potentially. And that just means they have to beat one or Arkansas, and they're going to Atlanta. They need Tennessee to win this football game. Oh, I completely agree. Mm-hmm. I completely agree that that Ole Miss needs Tennessee to win this football mm-hmm. game. And and to be completely honest with you, I, I it wouldn't hurt my feelings uh, if another uh, SEC West team beat Alabama this year. Yeah, are you talking about down the road? Yeah, why not? Mm-hmm. That's good. I'm good yeah. with that. That that egg bowl Thanksgiving night, everybody's going to talk about the NFL game. That that egg bowl has a chance to be premier. It, it well, just does. It does. Both teams are on a trajectory mm-hmm. to go to a, you know, New Year's Six bowl game right now. Yeah, I mean, that very well could be. You never know. But if the if everything slides right, I think I think State's got a, a puncher's chance against Georgia. It's at home. It's you know I just I think they've got a puncher's chance against Georgia. So yeah, uh, Mike Leach has played Georgia before, so he's played yeah. Kirby Smart and did it. He was in year one when everybody was kind of you know I think Mississippi State went six and six that year or five and five or whatever it was at that time. No, yeah. it was like three and seven they went. Yeah, it was but three. they went. Yeah, yeah, they went to Georgia and Kirby Smart came out and played his man free defense or his two man stuff. And Mike Leach, when he sees man coverage, will eat you up. Absolutely destroy you. Georgia Georgia ended up giving up like 31 points, I think, to Mississippi State that night. And if Mississippi State had a defense to go with it, yeah. Yeah, with a freshman quarterback and a freshman receiver. Yeah. And, you know, yeah. So, you know, and that's the thing about Leach. You've, you've You've got to appreciate what he's doing. Now, what scares me about State this year and I'm not trying to get off on a tangent, but hmm. they've started running the ball. Mm-hmm. And that's, you know, that's you. Basically, he's given Will Rogers the okay that if he goes up there, he sees five in the box with those big splits that they have. They're just running the ball. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it may, you something. can't, you don't play drop eight if they're going to run yeah. the ball on you. Exactly. It, well, yeah. exactly. And, and that's why I'm glad we've got Chris Partridge because. Mm-hmm. If you watch the state A and M game, our old coach never got out of the three two six. He was getting slaughtered, and he never got out of the three two six. Yeah, and I think our coach, and he never blitzed or anything really. He he was just it, it amazed me that Durkin didn't do something. But when you go back and look at the games last year, he was a lot more conservative. Mm-hmm. But see, Partridge isn't that way. He'll throw something at you. He'll look. He'll do strange things. He'll do things off the cuff. And I'm really glad we've got the guys, our defensive coordinator. Yeah, it's it's, it's almost like a 30 or 40% blitz rate with Chris Partridge. Every time you see it, they're sending an extra guy. It might be three down linemen, but they're sending four, whether it's a linebacker or one of the outside box safeties. They're all designed – it's a four-man pressure or a five-man pressure, um, depending on the situation. Right, and that's that's something that, that we have to have going forward, I think. All right. Um, Real yeah. quick before you get out of here, what is your prediction for the day? Old Miss 35, Auburn 21. Okay, everybody's pretty close around that. The line is 14 and a half, by the way. So you you were oh, right okay. on it. Yeah. <laughs> you're right. You're right on it. 
So 35-21, the over-under is at 55 points. So you went with um, 56. So you just right there at the line. It's like you knew that the line from Bet Online where it was, if you can see it below. But yeah, I went with, um, I think, 38 to 17, 34 to 17, somewhere somewhere around there. I like um, I th- that. Yeah, I think Ole Miss is going to cover. I don't think Auburn is going to um, score 20. I, I don't either. I really don't. I think mm-hmm. uh, if we get out and, you know, I've, the, the, the game sold out, so there will be a big crowd. I know it's an 11 a.m. start, but, you know, they can – they can turn it on. They proved that during Kentucky uh, with the 11 a.m. start. I think the crowd's going to be a big deal. Um, I'm hopeful. You know, I'm, I'm just dreaming. But, you know, how we have former players come and and speak to the team and, and uh, pump up the crowd during the game, mm. I would love to see Laquan Treadwell be that person this weekend. Yeah, I think it's Corey Peterson. Yeah, Corey will work, too. Yeah. Corey's better. That's the, you know, that's a, the catch, hmm. you know, after yeah. Tupperville left us, you know, for, for wit his pine box and left us and went to Auburn. No. Yeah. Anyway, get more on your SEC by making Locked On SEC your second listen. Everyday host Chris Gordy and the local experts of Locked On take you across the SEC in 30 minutes. Make Locked On SEC your second listen every day. Locked On SEC. Anyway, Tom, thank you very much for this. Enjoy the football weekend, and we will catch up with you next week, bud. Yes, sir. Hotty toddy. Hotty toddy.